Prehistoric art on a cave wall in Burlington, Vermont? Mysterious ancient stoneworks hide in plain sight across New England. Stone walls, rock piles, effigy works, and possibly petroglyphs. I'm Vermont-based author and researcher Mike Luoma, looking more deeply into our ancient stone mysteries of New England. Stoneworks are often covered in snow during our Vermont winters, making seeking them out a non-starter. But one intriguing Vermont site is only accessible on foot during the winter, when you can cross frozen pond ice and reach the Burlington Sea Caves. Also known as the Donahue or Intervale Sea Caves, or the Devil's Den, the cave is found on the edge of Burlington's Intervale, the floodplain of the Winooski River, as it meanders towards Lake Champlain. The path we take is an old road from the North End Plateau down to the edge of Long Pond in the Intervale Lowlands. Most folks come here to ice skate. These wetlands formed when they ran a highway through the Intervale in the 1970s, cutting off this sliver of land and expanding the size of Long Pond as well. Before that, although boggy, visitors could once stroll right up to the cavern in dry summers. Over there, past the highway, archaeologists excavated two sites in the late 1970s. The Donahue site yielded evidence of habitation at the beginning and end of the woodland period, with the later dates showing evidence of horticulture, the Abnaki enjoying corn, as well as their beloved butternuts. We walk across the pond ice along the hillside, which grows into steeper bluffs as we near the sea caves. There's possible effigy work here, outside on the bluffs. It's incredibly speculative, so I'll save it for after we see the cave art, I'm sure, is here. There are interesting features outside on both sides of the cavern, but they don't compare to what we find inside. Archaeologists at the University of Vermont once said the intervale along these lower miles of the Winooski River contained one of the densest concentrations of archaeological sites anywhere in New England. The Abnaki lived here all along the Winooski River. Though the possible petroglyphs you're about to see are not yet confirmed nor proven, given these surroundings, their appearance doesn't seem that far-fetched. I am a little surprised no one has reported them before. I love how the entrance almost looks like a keyhole.
Let's unlock some of its secrets. As simply a natural wonder, the cavern is beautiful. Most of this rock is a local magnesium-rich limestone known as dolostone, naturally beige to gray in color. Eons of erosion, all the wearing work of water, has brought out a stunning array of colors in the stone and carved smooth, almost organic curves. Though there was a sea here at the end of the Ice Age, we'd have been over 100 feet below the surface of the Champlain Sea. This cave likely wasn't a sea cave, but was eroded by the glacial Winooski River cutting away and washing through its former delta, settling as the Champlain Sea receded. The floor of the cave wasn't frozen in January when I first explored, preventing me from getting too deep inside. I returned after a bitter cold snap in February and found the floor frozen. In fact, I found more than that.
a sort of scalloped shell shape, seemed to be carved into the side wall near the back. Upon closer inspection, a boxy tail seemed to trail off it to the left. And there almost seemed to be a face in the wall to the right. This isn't very large, and none of it is visible from the front of the cavern, only from the back. I've tried to illustrate what I think I'm seeing, the sort of boxy tail and semicircular feature. And the face-like protrusion next to it. Although, attempting to draw from life and not make it look like a face, it still looks like a face. Maybe it is one, but seeing faces can also simply be pareidolia. Have a look for yourself. The feature on the right, at the very least, seems to show a line of knotted braids or chains, or maybe cup marks, coming down from the roof of the cave. This find is very preliminary. You're among the first to see this. Before we leave the intervale, a little more to see. There seem to be at least two more features of interest outside the cave. To the right of the cave, a perched stone sits in a sort of natural niche, almost as if in a shrine. Here's what the stone looked like before it was covered in snow. It struck me that the stone bore some resemblance to Odziozo, a small stone island in Lake Champlain, 
which Abnaki tradition says is Odziozo himself. He was a transformer and turned himself into a rock after carving out Lake Champlain, pushing up the mountains on both sides, and gouging out rivers and lakes with his fingers and hands. This is pure speculation. The perch stone doesn't exactly match Odziozo. Then again, Odziozo might not look like it used to. Legend has it the British shelled the small stone island in naval battles on Lake Champlain in both the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812, thinking it was a ship. Maybe part of old Odziozo was actually blown away. On the other side, to the left of the cave, we find this bluff, which seems to have been worked in spots to resemble a fish. I have no proof of this, other than what I'm seeing with my own eyes. So, have a look, and you can see for yourself. What do you see? Traffic to the sea caves is at an all-time high in this pandemic year. It is a beautiful, delicate, even sacred space. If you go, please treat the place kindly. It's been a little disturbing to see the wear and tear on the cavern in the course of just over a month. I almost regret sharing my pictures and video. I was even interviewed for a news story on visiting the cave. I believe it's important we share these kind of places. I would just ask that you please give them the reverence and respect they deserve. Treat them kindly. And I'll treat you to more of these ancient stone mysteries of New England.